Hi, brothers and sisters in Christ. I hope you are doing very well. The Lord has led me to come and do this word for you today with regards to chosen ones and faithful ones because there's some confusion between what is a chosen one, what is a faithful one. And so in this video, I'm going to give you just the example of what is the difference between the two and then also just a warning and caution word from the Lord as it relates to being the faithful ones and chosen ones and how it has been used. And so the Lord is always just looking out for us so that we don't fall into the traps and snares of the enemy because his heart is absolutely for us to just keep following him and keep being victorious in him and not to let anything bring us back down that can um, basically put us in bondage to sin and things like that. So before I get into this word, I will just pray over it. My beautiful God, I thank you so much, Lord, for this word that you have given me to release for your body of Christ today. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will ready hearts to receive this word, Lord, and that you'll let this word reach whoever needs to hear it. And I pray, Father, that each person that hears it, that they will receive a greater measure of your revelation, of your truth. And Lord, that you would give them the confirmations they seek with regards to this word as well. I pray against any confusion setting in their hearts and minds. And I just bind them, I break, my beautiful Jesus, by the power of your blood, any attempt of Satan over this word to hinder or delay it in Jesus' most holy and powerful name. And I pray that it will yield a hundredfold return harvest for you and your kingdom with the seeds that you sow with it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is the definition of a chosen one before we jump into a faithful one. So chosen one basically just means being selected or handpicked by God. Now, chosen one does not necessarily mean a chosen one is a follower of Christ. So stick with me. I'm going to jump into a few little scriptures. When we look at Israel, first and foremost, in Deuteronomy 7 verses 6 to 8, it says, For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. The Lord did not set his affection on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other peoples. For you were the fewest of all the peoples. But it was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath he swore to your ancestors that he brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Then we look at Jesus' disciples, for example, and we look at John 6 verses 66 to 71. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. Then Jesus replied, Have I not chosen you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. He meant Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, who, though one of the twelve, was later to betray him. So there is an example where you see already that Jesus chose the twelve, but amongst the twelve, one was a devil. Then when we look at Paul in Acts 9 verses 13 to 15, Lord Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings to the people of Israel. So here is a good example of someone who was against Jesus, who was Saul before he had his um, encounter with Jesus and then his name was turned to Paul, who would then go and be a Jesus follower and turn many to Christ. So someone who came from the not following Jesus to following Jesus. And then when we look at Pharaoh, so Pharaoh who didn't fear the Lord, who didn't serve the Lord, here is what God said about Pharaoh in Romans 9 verses 17. For scripture says to Pharaoh, I raised you up for this very purpose, that I might display my power in you and that my, my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. And then when we look at two more, Nebuchadnezzar, who also didn't fear the Lord or serve him, it says in Jeremiah 27 verses 6 to 7, 
Now I will give all your countries into the hands of my servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and I will make even the wild animals subject to him. All nations will serve him and his son and his grandson until the time of his land comes. Then many nations and great kings will subjugate him. So God said this of Nebuchadnezzar, that he was his servant and that God would do all these things, making him, making the animals subject to him and nations serving him. And then Cyrus as well in Isaiah 45 verses 1 to 5. This is what the Lord says to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of to subdue nations before him and to strip kings of their armor, to open doors before him so that gates will not be shut. I will go before you and I will level the mountains. I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. I will give you hidden treasures, riches stored in secret places, so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summons you by name. For the sake of Jacob, my servant, of Israel, my chosen, I summon you by name and bestow on you a title of honor, though you do not acknowledge me. I am the Lord and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God and I will strengthen you, though you have not acknowledged me. So God can choose those who will not acknowledge him and follow him. And he will choose those who also follow him. As we see here in the parable of the banquet in Matthew 22 verses 10 to 14. So the servants went out into the street and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there was not wearing wedding clothes, and he asked, How did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? And the man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, Tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are invited, but few are are chosen. So chosen by God just simply means God chooses specific people to carry out a certain purpose. So he can choose wicked people to carry out certain purposes like we see with Nebuchadnezzar and Cyrus um, carrying out God's instructions on behalf of his people Israel, like Nebuchadnezzar coming against Israel when they sinned against God to bring discipline on them, and Cyrus basically to help Israel. And so you, you can see the differences here between when God will choose different people. And we don't even need to look too far. We can look at Moses. God chose Moses to lead um, Israel out of Egypt. God chose Abram as the father of nations. God chose David as um, the king after his heart for Israel. You know, so there are many that, that God would choose also who follow him. So as long as we've got that clear understanding that a chosen one can literally be either someone who follows God or not follows God, God will choose his instrument. But a faithful one, a faithful one basically just means it's followers of Christ who really are surrendered to him, who love him, who follow him, and who don't go out doing their own thing. So basically, those in the body of Christ that are not complacent, who are not lukewarm towards God, who do not have one foot in the world and one foot in God, but who are literally all in for God and who are seeking him every day and making him their everything. You know, their, their thoughts are full of him. Their hearts are full of him. Their speech is full of them, of him. Everything they do, they do it in honor and glory of him. They would lay down anything in their life instantly when he asks them and he tr they try their best to follow in obedience. Those are faithful ones. We see in Romans 11 verses 1 to 6, it says, ask them, that, uh, ask them then, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people whom he foreknew. Don't you know that scripture says in the passage about Elijah, how he appealed to God against Israel. Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars. I'm the only one left and they're trying to kill me. And what was God's answer to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 who have not bowed the knee to Baal. So too, at this present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. And if by grace, then it cannot be based on works. If it were, grace would no longer be grace. So a faithful one is someone who does not bow down to idols, who does not bow down even to their own flesh, but really who are faithful to God. 
And he, they are those remnant that God is referring to. And again, it's not by works. It's not about doing everything perfectly because everyone falls short of the glory of God. That is why it's by grace. But it is the heart position of being a faithful one. And then Matthew 24 verses 10 to 13 says, At that time, many will turn away from their faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And Matthew 7 verses 21 to 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does my will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Leave me, you who practice lawlessness. So again, that shows the difference between faithful ones and ones that are not. So the ones who claim they know God, even if signs, miracles and wonders follow them, even if they prophesy, but their hearts are not seeking the Lord and they're not faithful to God, then, you know, at the end of days, the Lord can be like, I've never knew you. And so the faithful ones are the ones who will continue to stand firm, even when hearts grow cold, even when people back away into their complacency. And so that is just the difference between a chosen one and a faithful one. And a faithful one can be a chosen one, but not all chosen ones are faithful ones. But the warning that the Lord wants me to give is there is a tendency of the enemy wanting to come in and cause people who know that they're a chosen instrument of God to do purposes for him now, and also those who are faithful to start becoming prideful in that position. You know, they, they kind of are almost in a competition with the rest of the body of Christ. Oh, I'm a chosen one. You're not a chosen one. Oh, I'm a faithful one, but you're not a faithful one. And that is a very a destructive pathway that they are on. And they need to be very, very careful because even if you are a chosen one, a faithful one, that does not seal your fate. If you get to a point or a position of pride, pride goes before a destruction, as we see in Proverbs 16, verse 18. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And so if you start becoming prideful in that position, because you're thinking you're more faithful than others or because you're thinking you're chosen above others and you start flaunting it around, be careful because the Lord brings the tall tree low and he raises up the low tree. So just, um, just be very mindful of that, okay? Because Ezekiel 18 verses 24 says, But if a righteous person turns from his righteousness and commits sin and does the same detestable things the wicked person does, will they live? None of the righteous things that person has done will be remembered because of the unfaithfulness they are guilty of and because of the sins they have committed, they will die. And we also see in scripture that there was a point in time where God even banished the remnant of Israel because they themselves became corrupted. So be careful when you stand firm in the Lord, knowing you're faithful, knowing that you might be chosen by him. Just be careful that you don't fall in that trap of pride and haughtiness because it's not about what you have done before. It's about what you do now and in the future. So keep remaining faithful, keep remaining humble, and keep praying for the rest of the body of Christ that are complacent and lukewarm to wake up so that they too can realize the hour that is upon the world so that they will turn and be more faithful to our beautiful King Jesus and lay it all down for him. So my beautiful God, Lord, I thank you so much for clarity that you bring to the body of Christ. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for every brother and sister of mine, Lord, who is on this pathway of where the enemy wants to trap them with pride. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would just remind them that your heart is for all, Lord, to enter into your kingdom, for all to be faithful to you. And so, Lord, I pray that they will be more humble in that position. And I pray, Father, that they would pray for their other brothers and sisters who are in that position of not being fully hot on fire for you yet, Lord, to pray for them and to help them to get to that point. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus for the rest of the body of Christ to wake up even more and more, to understand the hour of trial that is upon the world. 
Help them to realize, Lord, that they really need to walk so closely with you to hear your voice and to know what is your will for their lives in these times and seasons. Because as darkness comes more and more on the earth, you are our light, Lord. But if they cannot find your light, it's very hard for them to then move. So we just pray, Father, that they would be enlightened and really get a stirring in their hearts to want to burn for you and seek you more. In Jesus' most holy and powerful name. Amen. All right, my brothers and sisters, have a wonderful day. God bless you.